Welcome to our review on resistance. So the first thing that we need to know is what does resistance actually affect in our circuit? So what we find is that it's all down to what happens to our current. So when we're looking at current, then that's going to depend upon our potential difference and the resistance within a circuit. So one thing that we should remember at this point is that when we're talking about resistance, that will always be measured in the units of ohms, which is given that funny little squiggly symbol, kind of like a little alien head. So what we actually need to remember is if you want to change the current within a circuit, you can't do that directly because it's a dependent variable. The only way you can change the current within a circuit is by actually changing either the potential difference or the resistance. And by doing that change to one of those, what we find is the current then changes in turn. The reason for that is our little formula that, again, I'm afraid we do have to memorize for the exam. The potential difference in volts is our current in amps times the resistance in ohms. Now that can be shortened down to the sort of like very brief version of V equals IR. So if you like learning just letters or coming up with little rhymes to help you remember it, that might be of use to you. The last thing we're going to just mention here is Ohm's law. And that just states that the current is proportional to the potential difference if the temperature does not change. And that's going to be very important as we come on to looking at sensing circuits a little bit later on in this topic. So the kind of question we could be asked here is a 1.5 volt battery has a current of 10 microamps calculate the resistance so again the first thing we need to do in this one is convert to our standard units so we don't use microamps as a standard obviously we use amps so we need to change our microamps into amps and that gives us a current of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 so once we've done that we need to rearrange our equation so when we're looking for the resistance it's going to be the potential difference divided by the current then you substitute in the values that we know and then plug that into your calculator to give us the answer of 1.5 times 10 to the power 5. And again, don't forget to include the units if they're not included on the answer line of the actual question itself. So to actually understand resistance, we need to recall the structure of a metal. Now, this is something that we've already done in our chemistry topic. So just to recap on the actual structure of a metal, what we find is that we've got all the positive metal ions arranged in lovely neat rows in a regular pattern, and then you've got those delocalized electrons that are scattered amongst them. So remember, those delocalized electrons have come from the fact that our metal atoms have actually lost that electron from their outer shell. So what we actually have in that scenario are now all of these electrons, these delocalized electrons, which are then free to move through that structure. If those electrons collide with something like the metal ions, for example, then that's what resistance actually is. It's the collision of our delocalized electrons with the metal ions. So a couple of points that we should just remember about what can affect the resistance within our circuit. We're just going to focus on the wire at this point. So if we actually had a thinner wire, then what we'd find is that that has a much greater resistance than a thicker wire. And the reason for that is that there's just a much greater chance of those electrons colliding with the positive metal ions when the wire is much thinner. A second example of how we could actually end up changing the resistance with just the piece of wire is by changing the length. So if we have a much longer piece of wire, what we find is, again, there's a much greater chance of the electrons colliding with the positive metal ions in their passage, and therefore the resistance will increase with the length. So the last thing we really need to consider about our resistance at this point are these devices called variable resistors. Now, what these will actually do is change the amount of resistance by changing the amount of wire the current is flowing through. And an example that you might have in your own homes is a dimmer switch for your lights. Now, what I've given you there are three different little images. On the bottom left, that's actually the one you may well have used in the classroom. So that is a variable resistor, as you would see it in the lab. The middle, we've got a little diagram there. So this is just showing us how it's going to work. So you can see terminal A and terminal B will be where the connections actually are to the rest of the circuit. And you'll notice that we've got that coil of wire. Now, the more of that wire that we actually allow the current to flow through, the greater the resistance will be.
So if the question was to ask you how you could increase the resistance in that particular circuit with that diagram in the middle connected, then you could say to move the little slider to the right or towards terminal B, because that means that it's going to have to pass through more of the coils of wire, so a greater length, and therefore that increases the chance of the delocalized electrons colliding with the positive metal ions. Therefore, resistance increases. The other one that I've seen on exam papers in the past is using the sort of view of a dimmer switch that sort of had obviously the front taken off, which is the diagram in the bottom right there. So what we've actually got there is a coil of resistance wire. Now, what we can see is that you've got your power supply at the top on the left and in the middle section. Now, you've got that little slider that we're going to move around the coil. The principle is the same. The more of the coil that the actual current flows through, the greater the resistance will be. So if you were to get a question asking how you could reduce the resistance or increase the current, then what we'd say is move the slider. And this way, you've got to be a little bit specific. You've got to say whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. So in this case, if we're reducing our actual resistance, then we want it to flow through a smaller amount of the wire. So we'd move the slider in a clockwise direction.